Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about my transfer experience between Langara College in Vancouver, BC to the University of British Columbia. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about three main things, the transfer process itself, admissions, and my experience with the transfer. So first, let's start with the transfer process. So when you're making the transfer between Langara and UBC, or Capilano or another college. The way it works to transfer into UBC is based on your credits. For me personally, I transferred with 30 credits that put me into second year at UBC. So I completed 30 credits at Langara and then they all transferred into UBC putting me into second year. There are a few different ways that you can do this. If you apply to UBC with under 24 credits, and they combine an average of your high school grades and then the 24 or less credits that you did at a post-secondary. So for example, if I did 20 credits at Langara, they would use that average plus my high school average. But because I had over 24 credits, in my case 30 credits, they did not look at my high school grades at all and solely based my admissions on my grades from Langara alone. And then if you want to transfer into third or fourth year at UBC, you have to have a minimum of 54 credits. You can transfer anywhere between 54 to 60 um, credits maximum if you're transferring into third or fourth year. So just depending on where you're at in terms of credits at your college, that will determine what you're gonna be using for what year you go into at UBC. It is important to note that UBC does not do a January intake, they only do a September intake, so a fall intake for new students. What that means is all new students going into UBC have to start in September of that year. So they do September 2019, September 2020, 21, etc. So unlike other schools like SFU, Langara, Capilano, they have a January winter intake, which means if you're a new prospect student, you can start in January. But why this is important is because for someone like me, I started Langara College in January of 2018, and I did one semester of January, and then I continued on into the fall semester. But because I did that and I applied into second year into UBC, that first semester of credits that I did got wiped out. So my best advice realistically is what you wanna do is make sure that you complete the full year at your college and then transfer in. Because for example, if I had just done one more semester at Langara, then I would have transferred into third year, but instead I lost those credits. And yes, they did help accumulate my GPA, but I don't get credits for them, so I did lose that money and that time that I have to still do at UBC. If that example doesn't make sense, basically in Langara, I had done 1.5 years, but at UBC, I only got credited for doing one year because they don't have the same January intake, they only credited that one full year that I did. So that's just something to note when you are transferring to make sure you're looking at the credits you have and what is actually getting transferred over. How to make sure everything transfers over. So the two main resources that I use to make sure that my credits that I was taking at Langara were actually transferable courses to UBC were the BC Transfer Guide if you live in British Columbia. You're probably familiar with this one. This one is super simple to use. You could just pop in the course, the institution, and then it tells you what or if it transfers over and then how many credits or what it transfers to. So this is really important to look at because you don't want to be wasting your time taking courses that don't actually transfer and there are some that don't transfer or might not transfer into the same thing at UBC. So for example, in a good case scenario, I took a sociology first level course, so intro to sociology at Langara. Usually courses are three credits, um, but this first year course that I took at Langara actually gave me six credits at UBC, so it gave me, it counted for basically two classes or a six credit course at UBC, so just things to know. Sometimes courses are called different things, but they are equivalent to the same credit, so definitely use BC Transfer Guide to help you with that. And then the second one, UBC has a direct one themselves, which is called UBC Transfer, it's pretty much the same thing, but you can use either or. I would recommend using BC Transfer Guide because it does have everything you need on there. Another thing that I use on the Langara website were looking at my degree specific requirements. So for me specifically, I transferred into arts as my faculty and arts have specific requirements that you need to meet at UBC. 
And so what you can do is on the UBC website, you can look at your degree specific requirements and then try to take those at Langara so that you're not wasting time. You don't have to take them all at Langara, but I would recommend taking as many as you can because then you're just gonna get them out of the way. Another thing is if you're unsure what you want to take at Langara, if you're not quite sure what you wanna do as your major, what you can do is take electives at Langara, which I did, and I think that it's actually a really good idea because you can kinda see what you like. I took courses from psychology, criminology, kinesiology, everything that you can think of and then you kind of can feel out what you like and if it's for you and so that's what I did I actually t was in a business focused program and I really thought I was gonna go into business school and it actually took me to take like a full year of business for me to realize that it wasn't for me and what the good thing is when you transfer into UBC you don't have to declare your major until third year so I had a lot of time and it definitely didn't feel like any of the courses were wasted. I still got credits for all of them because you do need a certain amount of elective courses and like lower level courses anyway. So I definitely recommend that if you're kind of unsure. I learned so much and made a lot of friends in those classes. And like I said, you don't have to declare your major or I'm not sure if that's for all faculties, but arts, I didn't have to declare my major until third year. So. I was already at UBC by that time and I had made my decision. Another thing to know about your faculty requirements for each department is don't need to be completed before you transfer. So I, like I said, you can take some of them at Langara or you don't even take electives, but there are some of them that have to be completed before you hit 60 credits. So just depending on if you're transferring into say fourth year, that might be you have to get them done beforehand. But if you're transferring into first, to second year or to third year, you should be fine. But I think the English requirement that for UBC, most people took at Langara, I feel like majority of my class, when we had spoken, were all taking this class because it was transferable to UBC and met the language requirement for English, for the English components. Just have a look because you need to meet some requirements such as your English one within the first 60 credits and I would say most people do that at Langara. Okay, next I'm gonna be talking about admissions. So what's important to note is that for admissions, it really depends per faculty on how the application process goes. Specifically for someone like me who transferred into a Bachelor of Arts, I did not have to complete a personal profile. I'm not sure if this is something that they took away a while ago, but transfer students actually don't need to complete a personal profile, which can be a pro and con. When I had first heard this, I was like, oh my gosh, they're basing it solely on my grades, which I was a little bit nervous about. However, this does eliminate the whole personal profile, extracurricular, all of that kind of stuff. So I would just say to keep your grades up and it's very doable at Langara, which I will talk about later in the experience portion. But that being said, there are, I think a majority of faculties that do require a personal profile upon transferring. So I know that kinesiology, and business, so solder requires a personal profile as well as an interview. So just depending on your faculty, um, they may require, but I know that arts does not require if you're a transfer student, but they do if you are coming straight from high school. And that brings me to grades, grades getting into UBC as a transfer student. So UBC and Langara both use the 4.33 GPA scale. You can find information about the 4.33 GPA scale on both the Langara and the UBC website, um, but on I think the 4.3 is like 90% and up. So because my admissions was solely based on my GPA, I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the grades. Sorry, I've written them down here. So for me personally, I actually had a pretty low average getting into UBC. I was a little bit worried about my grades. So for me getting into UBC, I had a 3.35 average, which is about a B plus average at the time. And I spoke to some other people from asking around for my friends who transferred from Langara to UBC or Capilano to UBC, I would say the average to getting in was about a 3.8. So 3.8, it was I think that's about like an 85 average, which is an A, A, which is an A average. So I would say, that that's when you kind of want to be around if you are applying especially with no personal profile to help you out i would say like stick to the a low a like i said i did get in with the b plus but i didn't get in until later so i did not get like early admissions or anything i got my acceptance on june 7th so i know a lot of my friends got theirs um, like before me and i was pretty worried but i got the email on june 7th they never mailed me. I don't know if this is an old thing that they do, but previous years they would mail you this like really cute UBC like little package thing and admissions, but I think they're trying to save paper. So they just emailed me and that was it. I just had to go online and accept my offer and then you have to like pay, uh, but you have to actually go online and accept it or else they give it to people like on the wait list. 
So June 7th is when I got my offer. I would recommend joining the Reddit threads. There's, I'll leave the link in the description box, but there are Reddit threads and people update them usually around that month of June, July and talk about like their admissions because each year it's a different admission average. And I was really, really looking on the Reddit threads a lot to kind of get information and gauge like what the admissions in were that year. So obviously I know the arts admissions is a little bit lower. That's why I got it in with a B plus. Um, but I think that other faculties probably have a higher GPA. What I took from asking around most people, especially in my year, got in with like a 3.8, which a 3.8, which is like safe. Because for me, we didn't have to do a personal profile. The application process was pretty straightforward. You just fill out your information and then you had to get your transcripts sent from your initial institution to your next one and then you could just do that online it was very straightforward you just select like where you want to send to i send it to whatever the address was at ubc admissions and then you just wait so yeah the waiting game is pretty hard but don't worry i believe in you guys and if you're waiting try not to stress you probably got in so and if you didn't it's not the end of the world okay the last thing that i'm going to talk about is my actual experience transferring from Linguera to ubc and what i thought of the whole process and being a student so my actual experience i would say that in terms of workload i would say that at ubc you definitely have more homework and more like, a little bit more of a challenging workload compared to Linguera. i wouldn't say one is harder than the other necessarily in terms of the content but i would say you just like do more at ubc um and obviously nobody holds your hand at ubc a lot of the classes have like 200 300 sometimes 400 students in them and you really have to take accountability for your own stuff i would say at langara the classes are very similar to high school your professors actually a lot of the time notice if you're not there they wouldn't say anything but like they would like they can tell if you're not there in your seat and they like i the professors know you by name in langara for a lot of the time so I really, really enjoyed Langara. I think it was such a great school and I think it was such a great introduction to the post-secondary life. I'm really glad that I went there and I had that experience. And I do think that Langara really, the university transfer program really set me up for success at UBC. I feel like they prepared you on how to properly write a post-secondary essay and how to use citations properly and how to do research and all those things that like you don't really learn in high school enough i would say so i did feel very well equipped going into the into ubc yeah overall my transfer experience was really good and i think making friends at ubc is actually really easy to do i think my main advice is to talk to the people sitting beside you in class get their numbers get their social medias because having friends in class even if you're not super close with them is really powerful just having someone's contact information because you never know if you're gonna miss a class or if something happens. So just having those study buddies or those core classmates is my main advice. I did that at Langara and I did that at UBC and I don't know what I would have done without those main group of friends that I made at both schools. I would say that my grades significantly went up coming from Langara to UBC. That could be of two reasons. One, you, when you're, I mean, when you're in first and second year, usually the GPA, or usually the class averages are pretty low just because people are kind of new to post-secondary, getting to know the environment and how to actually properly write a post-secondary essay compared to third and fourth year, you're kind of experts, experts. So yeah, if your grades aren't the best right now, it definitely does get better. Because UBC is such a large campus, I would recommend joining a club or joining some sort of sports team. It's such a good way to make friends. There's honestly so, so many clubs for everyone. Like clubs you would have never thought of and I really recommend doing that to make the most of your university experience. Another thing that I would mention about transferring to UBC is when you're picking your classes to make sure you look up the buildings and the locations because it actually takes pretty long to get from some buildings to another buildings for example like Buchanan to like the science buildings I don't know what they're actually called but they're like so far like it would literally I would be like running so I would recommend looking because you only have 10 minutes between class and sometimes you only have five if your professors are like chit-chatting so it's not like Langara where you can just casually walk to class you're like really gotta hustle to get to class and to get a seat so that's one of my recommendations or get a scooter or something like that and last but not least I'll mention imagine day so imagine day at UBC is like on the first day of classes or I think it's like on the first day of school I don't think you have classes but for new students if you're brand new coming from high school it's like this big thing it's like super fun it's like a big thing like you get like 
you get a bunch of stuff and it's like a big welcome but i will say if you're a transfer student going into imagine day it's like not the same you don't actually get to go with all the new students you just get to go with all the transfer students and it's a really boring assembly and it's really not necessary so i wouldn't really recommend going to imagine day if you're a transfer student it's, it's like nothing nothing really happens they give you like a subway sandwich and it's kind of boring but if you are a new student going in, I would def I would recommend going. There's like a rally and everything. That's just like my two cents on the Imagine Day for transfer student. It was like very disappointing. Okay, I think that is all I have to say about my transfer experience from Langara to UBC. I hope that answered some of your questions and put you at ease a little bit. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'm wishing you all the best of luck with your post-secondary adventures. Talk to you soon.